are closer ties between Singapore and the United Kingdom, with both countries agreeing to elevate relations to, quote, a strategic partnership. This follows a meeting between Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong and his British counterpart Rishi Sunak on the sidelines of the G20 summit in New Delhi. Oh, they have agreed to boost their already good ties to a strategic partnership across five key areas. Well, these include the economy, sustainability, climate and also research and technology. Both countries will also explore new frontiers in digital trade and the economy and work together to drive growth. For more on this, we have with us in the studio British High Commissioner to Singapore, Cara Owen. Welcome, High Commissioner. It's good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. So, firm friends, uh, friends getting even closer, but is it more than this? So you're right. We've had a really close relationship for a long time. Uh, our relations cover a whole range of issues, but we're absolutely delighted by the breadth the depth and the ambition of what we're pledging to do together. I think both governments are really keen to make sure that we're working on the issues that matter to our populations and that we're shaping the future of tech, the future of our societies and the future of our economies. Partners for the future. All right, yeah, you talk about issues that matter. Now, this strategic partnership, that applies across five areas, five specific areas, as say, opposed to eight or nine. So why these five and what is in this five, in these five that go beyond what the UK and Singapore have already enjoyed in the past? So economy is a great example. So we have a fantastic trading relationship. It's £21 billion. 40% uh, of our trade uh, to this region is done with Singapore. And that's partly because we already have one of the best trade arrangements, trade architectures between any two countries that I can think of, including because we've negotiated things like a digital economy agreement. But we're going to add to that a new and modern investment treaty that will give even more confidence to investors in both countries to invest in each other. Uh, and we're going to be focusing on those kind of cutting edge issues in trade, like how do you harness the best of the digital economy? Uh, how can we really define the future of digital trade together? So there's plenty of opportunity here and it stands to benefit, it sounds like it, that both businesses and individuals mm -hmm. as well in the UK, as yeah. well as Singapore. High Commissioner, put that into context for us, just how much benefit there's going to be for these, for the, for, for the people on both sides. So I, th I think both governments have at front of mind when they're doing diplomacy with anybody, what can it do for our populations? That's the thing, for our prosperity and for our security. So if you look at the climate chapter, for example, um, we're already collaborating in areas like hydrogen and carbon capture, both of us need to make sure that we decarbonise our power. But through this agreement, we've added another area around nuclear. We're going to be talking about nuclear safety and security and skills in that kind of area because uh, all of these energies are going to need to be harnessed to decarbonise. But then looking at things like health. So if you look at the technology chapter, we're talking about precision medicine. How do we harness the best of... Uh, a whole range of developing technologies to make sure that we can bring those benefits back to our populations. Pandemic preparedness. How can we harness the best of things like AI and engineering biology while also keeping our populations safe? I think that's one of the, we've got a very similar philosophy. When you're regulating these new areas, you need to do so in a way that doesn't stifle innovation and growth, but you absolutely need to be sure that you're keeping your population safe. Um, and just in terms of the economy, there are 5,700 UK com companies active in Singapore. So you can imagine the number of jobs that Singaporeans wake up every morning uh, and go to work because of UK investment. And we can say the same in, in the UK too from Singapore investment. All right. I'm sure there'll be many points that Dawn will be keen to pick up on. But uh, I'm returning to an earlier point you made, and I could have misheard this. You said 41% of your trade to this region, so I assume Southeast Asia, actually goes through Singapore. Yeah. So this boosting of ties, deepening and broadening with Singapore mm. should also, in principle, lead to deepening and broadening ties with Southeast Asia. How do you see this region benefiting more specifically from all these uh, things that you mentioned right now. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So what we've been doing together on digital trade, for example, where, you know, we've got one of the advanced 
agreements between any two countries. That is also playing into how we're both talking to ASEAN, uh, as you're sketching out how ASEAN can harness this new economy. And if you look at the climate uh, chapter, we're really conscious that we have two of the biggest financial centres in the world. And the infrastructure needs in this region to power growth right across the region are genuinely huge, particularly for sustainable infrastructure. If we put together our ability to crowd in private finance from both of our financial centres, add to it the kind of technical assistance capability that we both have, and for us, development finance that we have, uh, that we are um, working together to make sure that that can find its way to the projects and the uh, infrastructure uh, projects that the region has planned to achieve its own goals. So I think you're right. This isn't just about the UK and Singapore. This is about what we can do together more broadly in the region. Hi, Commissioner. You mentioned earlier the collaboration that the UK and Singapore have had on future economy mm. sectors, on the green economy, mm. on digital digital economy as well. How important is it going to be for these two countries to be able to perhaps write the rules for AI, as an example, and, and for digital transformation? Yeah, so um, our two prime ministers are very interested in what the future of AI can offer both of our countries. But we also know that there are some risks. And so uh, we are holding a summit in um, uh, November around AI safety. And that's exactly the reason we're wanting to talk to Singapore is you're very good at thinking through this kind of regulation. You're very good at influencing internationally. We, I hope we don't flatter too much, we can do the same kind of things for the UK. So if you put us both together, uh, with the determination to have pro-innovation, pro-growth regulation, that could be a really helpful joint contribution. Hi, Commissioner. Thank you so much for coming into the studios and sharing more on this elevated strategic partnership between the two countries. Thank you for your interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. British High Commissioner to Singapore there, Cara Owen.